Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, maybe. Um, so here we are once again on our Ladies Evening Fellowship. It is Thursday night, and so we are going to get started in just a few minutes. So I will just be talking and filling time until we get like everybody on. Oh, hi, Linda. Hi, Mary Lou. Um, hopefully I won't go so long tonight, Mary Lou, and then Jim doesn't have to wait for dinner. Because I know you had to leave last night because he's hungry. Um, hi, Lyndon. Hi, Mom. So hopefully you can all hear me. We've been working on the sound and the, the picture quality and things like that. So hopefully it's going to be better now. And it'll, we've gotten all of those little things kind of worked out in our in our situation here and again joining me tonight linda is in the room she is sitting right next to me and um oh there's <laughs> thanks and she is gonna be handling the comments hi cameron hi honey um she's gonna handle the comments so if you have anything to add or to ask or to say make sure you type it in and um, Linda will kindly interrupt me so that we can take care of any questions you might have. Hi Maria and Karina. Aw, somebody, I can't see the little thing, but I see somebody's got a little puppy waving or something. <laughs> cool. That's so cool. And Yabina. Hi, and Sue. Wow. Got all these people going on. So I'm just going to give a couple more minutes, and then we're going to get started. And make sure, because like last night I gave you the warning that you need to have your snack or something. So whatever you chose to have as your snack with you tonight, because during Ladies Fellowship we're always eating, share with us in the comment section what you have. And I'm going to share right now what I have because... It just makes me so happy and puts a big smile on my face. So, um, as you all know, I'm allergic to chocolate, so I can't have, um, like, the really good candies that, like, everybody else gets to have all the time. At least, I guess they're great. Hi, Ladina. And Sylvia. Hello. And Louise. And I don't know who else yet because I can't go that fast. And... And, oh, Gilda. I, I thought I was reading the wrong. Hi, Gilda. Um, so I have my water because, you know, I drink a gallon of water a day. And this is the end of my gallon for the day. Drink some water. It's good for you. And it gives you a reason to get up off the couch move around a little bit, too. Because you'll have to go to the restroom. Hi, Virginia. How you doing? And somebody is in. Oh. <laughs> Pastor Sherry, he has um, popcorn. That's his snack tonight. And so is I'm sure it's Cameron's snack and James's snack and Zane's snack. Zane eats that stuff like crazy. He loves it. And um, anyways, so um, my snack is something super awesome. <laughs> that popcorn. <laughs> Popcorn's awesome. Um, so. I really wanted to try these things and they've been out of stores everywhere. So you have to like special order them through Amazon or something. And Linda, being a really awesome daughter that she is, um, she went ahead and she ordered me them. They're Oreos. They're the white Oreos. But these ones are super awesome because inside they have pink sparkle frosting. I'm going to open it up to show you pink i don't know if you can see the sparkles in it i'll get it real close to the camera pink sparkle frosting they are amazing so if you come across um the trolls oreos maybe somebody will like hear me in the oreo company that i'm saying this and send me some for free that'd be awesome um they're really good but if you see them at the store and they're only like $2.99 a bag, um, please get them for me because Linda spent $9 to get me the box of cookies. 
crazy girl. Anyways, we'll be talking about that a little bit more later because that's what tonight's about. So it's been about five minutes. So we have, um, oh, the, the flavor, it's uh, vanilla. They're vanilla Oreos because they're the white Oreo instead of the chocolate Oreo. So they're just vanilla flavored. And even the pink frosting is just vanilla flavor. It's just color. So, but it's sparkly and pink and it's so fun. And so it's really awesome. So anyways, tonight, tonight's going to be, oh, hi, Gail. Um, tonight's going to be so good. Um, I have been just painting and praying and asking God to speak for our ladies meeting and I am wearing my entrusted shirt. We are entrusted because it is our normal would have been our ladies meeting the third Thursday of every month. Um, but being as I've been speaking every Thursday night with you, um, I just let God tell me what it was he wanted me to talk about. And it kind of it goes off of of the an interested book a little bit tonight so what i really want to talk to us about is the difference between knowledge and wisdom because right now i feel like we really need knowledge and wisdom and how to navigate everything that's going on and and decide what to listen to hi nicole and what to um uh like, what should we let into our minds? What should we let into us? Like, it, it's not, it's okay to, to listen to the news and it's okay to hear those things. But what should we really be taking in? And we need to have wisdom and knowledge in this. And um, a lot of times when we talk about wisdom and knowledge, people think they're the same thing. Like, w wise decisions are knowledgeable decisions. And not necessarily. There is a slight difference between knowledge and wisdom. Um, like, knowledge said, Linda, find your mom the cookies that she's been asking for. Wisdom would have told her not to spend $9 on cookies. Okay, so there's the difference. There was knowledge. There was something that she knew. Wisdom is how we act it out. And... Although I love the cookies and they are super awesome and they taste really great, I really would not have wanted her to spend $9 on some cookies that now I do not share with anyone because of how valuable they are. See, if she had just spent the regular amount of money, she could have some, but she didn't, so now she doesn't get any. Bummer. Hi, Tara. So, anyway, so the... You know, we're we're so captivated by all of this information. We have so much coming at us and so many things and conflicting reports and and um, the numbers. And and I'm just going to tell you that I get frustrated because I'm a math person and the way people report the numbers drives me crazy because they try to make their situation look however they want it. And they manipulate numbers to make it into something scary or something super awesome or whatever the case may be, whatever they're looking for. And they're not reporting the numbers in the same situation. And so numbers are so distorted. Don't get me started because then I'll have to give you a math lesson. And graphs. Oh, don't even look at their graphs. Their graphs are so messed up. They're not even right. Ugh. If you are not sure, you can send it to me and I'll let you know if the graph is accurate or not. Like if it's even set up right. Because yikes. I'm thinking, did none of these people have middle school math? Because that's what I cover like a lot. Anyways. So um, we have all of this stuff and we're so captivated by all of it. And we want all this information and we want to take it in because we want to be informed and, and we should be. That's awesome. We want to be informed, right? Okay. But how we then take that, those pieces of knowledge and how we use them, that's the difference. Because being informed, that is how we acquire the knowledge. So education, that is the knowledge. But then wisdom is how we take that knowledge and we use it. Okay, so there's the, there's the difference between the two. Knowledge is knowing. So here's a real easy example. Knowledge tells you that tomato is a fruit, right? Tomato is a fruit. Although Bob the tomato is on veggie tails and he's still a fruit. Okay, because there's also Madam Blueberry. She's a fruit. So great. Okay, but a lot of people think of tomato as a vegetable. 
the not the wisdom part says you don't put a tomato in a fruit salad right so knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit wisdom not putting it in fruit salad because that's gross right okay so there's like just a basic reason for wis difference between wisdom and knowledge it's how we how we use the things how we're we're gonna be able to use them hi bob um oh i just talked about bob the tomato and bob's on now oh that's so cool um sorry squirreling i can't help it okay so i have 10 10 scriptures for you tonight um I'm not usually big on like tons of scriptures, but I really feel that we need to make sure that we are understanding the Bible. Like we always are looking to the Bible and make sure that we're going to the Bible for, for our information to fill us with that knowledge. And then when we have that knowledge, we'll be able to make wise choices based on that knowledge that we have. And, and that's ultimately what we want to do. So first, first, I'm going to start like, in Old Testament and move on through. So here's just one, and there is a ton, a ton of scripture on wisdom, knowledge, and things like that. So these are just a few that I picked out because I thought that they were kind of applicable. So in Exodus 31.3, Exodus 31.3, it says that I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability and expertise in all kinds of crafts. God gives wisdom through the spirit of God. And the spirit of God is in us. As soon as we accept Jesus, bam, we get the Holy Spirit, spirit of God. So we have those things. God will give us those things. All we have to do is ask, right? So we ask and God gave him great wisdom. In this situation, um, talking about Moses, great wisdom, right? Ability and expertise, expertise. That means you can do things like an expert, expertise. So um, make sure that we're asking God for wisdom. Second, Deuteronomy 34.9. Again, that's Deuteronomy 34.9. All right. Now, this is a different situation. We're talking about Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. And when I read that, and I just, I, in Exodus, I, the spirit of God gives wisdom. And then here in Deuteronomy, the spirit of wisdom. I was like, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because think about right now in our situation, we rely on the Holy Spirit. And back in Old Testament times, they didn't have the Holy Spirit because they were still in Old Testament times. So we rely on the Holy Spirit now. And to me, this is just talking about the same Holy Spirit then as now, but it was talking about in Old Testament times. So the Holy Spirit was given to people even then, um, without being named specifically, but the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom. And we need to rely on the Holy Spirit to give us those wise choices. Right, moving up a little bit. Third scripture, 1 Kings 4, 29. God gave Solomon, Solomon, the wisest person like ever, okay? God gave Solomon very great wisdom. Not a little bit of smarts, very great wisdom and understanding. The understanding piece is huge. It is so big and knowledge as vast as the sands of the seashore. Okay, so my favorite um, wise moment of Solomon is how he chose to uh, stop the argument about the two ladies they had the babies and one lady rolled over on her baby in the night and it died. And then she took the baby from the other one and they go to the, the, the king, well, Solomon, and uh, they're like, it's my baby. No, it's, not, it's my baby. And they're arguing, whatever. And Solomon's like, all right, I got this. I know exactly. 
God gave him such great wisdom and understanding. He came up with the plan and was like, I know how to find out whose baby it really is. And no, I would never think because I'm not Solomon with all this great wisdom, but he says, take a knife, cut the baby in half, give half to each one. Okay, crazy, but of course the real mom is like, no, 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 leave my baby alone and she can have him. I'd rather that he live with her than, than die. And so he knew who the real mom was. But that was such um, an example of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And I don't know about you, but when you're faced with difficult situations and sometimes you're told, you know, you have to do this, do that, whatever the case may be, um, if you're having to make a quick decision, sometimes things don't work out really great by by making a quick decision. Um, but it can be said for the other way around as well. Like if you take too long to make the decision, maybe the decision is, you know, past and, and you can't make that decision anymore. So there's something to, you know, seeking God, asking, don't make rash decisions and really consider what's going on. Um, Solomon was just super wise. Um, I, I didn't get to say hi to a couple people. Miss Jean's on, and Riga's on, and Jerry, and I think that's it. But I'm not sure. Linda's over here, not telling me. You're caught up. Oh, I'm caught up. Yay! Okay, so let's move on. We are going to Psalms. Scripture number four tonight, Psalm. 49.3. So Psalm 49.3. It says, For my words are wise and my thoughts are filled with insight. Wow. I know that Pastor and I on Wednesday nights were, were in Psalms and, and because there's such comfort and, and reassurance in Psalms. But this one spoke big to me. I was like, wow, for my words are wise and my thoughts are filled with insight. Wouldn't you love to be in that place that like you know that your words are wise. Wouldn't you like to know that the things you're saying are always filled with wisdom? I would love to be in that place. I'm not there. And it's okay. I'm trying, and eventually I'll get there. And we all keep trying. One more Psalm. Psalm 111.10. Again, that's Psalm 111, 10. It says, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Now, I just said in Psalm 49 that I, oh, wouldn't it be awesome to be wise all the time? But then in Psalm 111, it tells us how we can be wise. Fear of the Lord, the foundation. We need to understand that God is in control of everything and he's, he's got it all covered, every part of it. And that starts that wisdom piece for us because that wisdom is how we act and what we do and, and what we, how we incorporate the knowledge that we have. And so with that, we make sure that the foundation of our entire life is founded on God and that he is in control of everything and that we fear him, not trembling fear, but reverent fear. And that we know that he's got everything taken care of. That starts that foundation of wisdom. And I think right now in the times that we're in, how much wisdom could go a long way, a little bit, just go a long way through all of this. So if we are Trusting every single day and saying, okay, God's got this. I know God's in control. My foundation every single day is built on God. And it's built on what he has for me. And it's built on what his word says. Then we'll make wise choices. We'll be those examples of wisdom. And if we are speaking his word, we're going to be using wise words. And we will sound so much smarter than we think we are. I think I said that the right way. <laughs> Anyways, so there's just so much. Make sure you have understanding. Make sure you have fear of the Lord before you open your mouth. Before you open your mouth. And make sure, like, I've seen some crazy stuff. I tried to stay off social media, with, except for this, of course. Um, but, like, 
taking those little rabbit trails where people are like, oh, this and this, and they, they just keep reposting other people's stuff without um, following up on it. And I had a friend of mine sent me a message, and it was something about Nostradamus or, I think it was Nostradamus, something. Nostradamus predicted this virus over 200 years ago. And I was like, what? You, I said, you better do some fact checking because that, I don't know about that. And I said, if it's true, okay, great. I said, but I don't know. So they fact checked it and it was false. But other people had been posting it as, oh, look at this, look at this. And it was like, wow, people are just taking whatever's posted as 100% truth. And I feel like we're all smart enough to know better but as pastor says quite often the proof is in the pudding and the pudding is that everybody is passing these things on as truth so we need to make sure that what we're passing on what we're portraying what we're showing the world because we are examples of christ and we need to make sure that we are posting with wisdom and we're posting with truth so don't just repost somebody's post Check it out. Make sure that it's legit before you before you pass it on and keep spreading this false stuff. It's I'm some of it's just silly. Okay, Nostradamus or whoever it was. Oh sure, maybe. But it's still um it's unsettling to some people. And so there needs to be wisdom in how we portray that and how we go about um presenting the information to other people because we really are the hands and feet of Jesus and right now how we're acting the things that we're doing um, how we're responding to all of this it's gonna speak volumes to people it already is it's speaking huge amounts to people and when everything is settled and and life gets back to normal not the new normal but the old normal which will be a great normal when we get back to it um, it's going to make a difference on what their new normal is going to be. There's a lot of people right now that are um, looking at the Bible that never did before. And, you know, we have an opportunity. We really do. We have a great opportunity before us. And we have to make sure that we're wise in, in the opportunities that are being given to us. And some of those people, their new normal is going to be trying to find a church and um, trying to connect and make um, understanding of all of this that's been happening. So we can take this opportunity now and um, start being that living example for others that might be searching. Because I know that this time is unsettling for all of us. Um, even with the strongest faith, we, we still have ups and downs and good days and, and bad days. Um, and questions and confusion and that's okay it's okay um, but we shouldn't feed it we shouldn't feed into that we need to make sure that we are looking and relying on God as our foundation every single day make sure that we're, we're doing what what it takes to make it through this together so let's move on I got five scriptures to go all right so we are in Proverbs now Proverbs 2 10 says, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. It is so reassuring to have knowledge. I have knowledge that God died for me. I have knowledge that he rose again. I have knowledge that when this is all said and done, we know in the end, we know who the winner is. There's knowledge, there's joy in that. And the wisdom will enter your heart. Think about that. Wisdom in my heart so that when I'm making choices and I'm speaking to others, we speak from our heart. And we're going to speak from wisdom. It's It just goes together. It all works out. Make sure that you're, you're full. You're full of knowledge. You're full of understanding knowledge of the word of God. That is the most important. That is the big foundation. Now, as we move into New Testament times, we're going to go in, uh, sorry, just kidding. We're going to go into Ecclesiastes 
um, 7.12, Ecclesiastes 7.12. It says, wisdom and money can get you almost anything, but only wisdom can save your life. Now, I know people all the time are like, give me some money. Linda's, Linda's like, what? She actually turned around and looked at me right now. Okay. Wisdom and money can get you almost anything. That's true. That is true. Money can buy a lot of stuff. Being wise can get you a lot of stuff. But only wisdom can save, save your life. Only wisdom. Think about it. What kind of wisdom are we talking about? We're talking about godly wisdom. Because ultimately, as Christians, we keep living. We just change our address. Right? Isn't that cool? We keep living. We just change our address. We're going to live at 777, maybe five sevens. I don't know. Maybe seven sevens to make it totally perfect. Um, Holy Lane. I don't know. <laughs> On the streets of gold in heaven. It's so awesome to know that, you know, it, God, even way back when you think before there was economy, um, real economic systems like we're used to today, this, the scripture still already had it in there about money and, and how this is not going to, money doesn't do it for everybody. It doesn't get you where you want to be. And then a couple of verses later, um, in Ecclesiastes 7.19, it says, One wise person is stronger than ten leading citizens of a town. One wise person. Hmm. Wouldn't you like to be considered that wise person in your town? I would. I'm going to try to be super wise. Make wise choices. Listen to my heart. Full of knowledge and joy. Speaking from those wisdom pieces. I got to make sure I am read up and I am prayed up and I have that word deep in my heart so that I can speak from wisdom all the time. It's so important. People are looking for answers and they're looking for wisdom. And right now, wow, to be someone that could give a little bit of hope and encouragement to others, that, that would be amazing. As we move in, we are in scripture number nine already. Yes. Luke 2.52, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. You know, Jesus was on earth just like us. People, we're people, he is a person, and, you know, he had to grow just like everyone else. Now, yes, he is God and, and whatever, but he still learned. He still went to the synagogue. He still sat and talked and, and got that knowledge and those things so that he could exhibit the wisdom through the word of God and from the word of God. Um, so we have to remember that even though Jesus knew it all and would do it always right because he's Jesus, he gave us an example. He didn't just go, Hey, I'm Jesus, and I already know, so I don't need to sit and listen. He didn't go, oh, I've already heard this one. I don't need to hear it again. He took the opportunity for that knowledge to be instilled in him, for, hear, for hearing how um, the scripture was recited and um, the understanding of the people of the time. So it's a good example for us that we never know it all. We don't have it all together. Even Jesus went to school in the synagogue, right? So we're never too old. We're never too wise. We, we don't have it all together all the time. We got to make sure that we are going and seeking that knowledge and wisdom um, so that we can portray that wisdom. All right. Um, moving on. Last scripture, scripture number 10, Romans 11.33. Again, Romans 11.33. It says, oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. Riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. This scripture is now. I know that I know God's got this. 
There is nothing you could tell me that is going to make me say, God didn't know about COVID-19. Or God doesn't know what he's going to do about this. No, God does. He knew it was coming. And he knows exactly what he's going to do about it. He knows exactly how it's going to be handled. He knows exactly the end result. God already knew. And it's so nice knowing that he's got it and I don't have to understand his decisions and his ways. I'm never going to understand that until I'm glorified and I'm there and then I can go, yo, God, what's up? Why did you do that? But then I'll know too. So I think we just need to trust God. We need to say, okay, this time is a learning opportunity. I get to learn how to enjoy time in isolation. I get to learn to rely on God to be everything that I need. I get to learn to rely on some solitude. I get to learn again what it means to have time with my family. I get to learn again those things that are most important because we still have food and we still have water and electricity still on and and yes, there's people that are working to make those things happen. And not all of us are still working in those fields and not all of us are still um, making that happen. But life is continuing. And we, we have to make sure that when we're on the other side of this, that we are making those wise decisions and those knowledgeable um, choices about the important things in life what's important and um, priorities. And I think now we might prioritize things a little bit differently than we did before. It's a possibility. And if you're one of those that maybe you're thinking about that now, you're like, yeah, you're right. I used to think that like watching my telenovelas was like the top. I had to, I had to have that. I had to Maybe now you're like, mm, maybe not. Maybe maybe going in and seeing a friend is going to take precedence. Maybe um, reaching out to others and making sure people are well. Maybe that's going to be um, our new normal. That'll be an exciting thing to see. That'll, that new norm and the new priorities will be nice. I'm, I'm just... Um, I'm excited about what God has for us, and I know that, you know, nobody's truly enjoying isolation, and nobody's truly enjoying um, being away from each other. I know that I don't enjoy being away from all of you. I wish so much that we could be together, and that this was happening in our fellowship hall, and we were all eating together, and, and, and getting to see one another, but I think that it's going to make us appreciate all of these things a little bit more. Um, I've heard a lot of um, people say that they are worried. And I, I just have to tell you, worry worry's not, worry's not wisdom. Um, I, I I just it makes me want to cry. It makes it makes me sad because I'm not worried. I don't like the things that are going on, but I'm not worried. See, worry comes from visible things that we can see, and when we see something, we go, "Ooh, what if? Ooh, what if? What if? What if?" So we see those we see those numbers, and it makes us worry. But the worry isn't. It's not like, "Ooh, what am I going to do?" It, it's more like, "What if?" And then the worry comes because we start what ifing everything and what if this happens? And then you play out a scenario. What if this happens and you play out another scenario? We need to not what if. We need to just take what it is and um, take it to God, just like Pastor was saying last night. And we need to lay it down before the Lord and say, here, um, please take my worry because we're not going to get anywhere with the worry and the what ifs. We need to have that wisdom. And wisdom, wisdom's invisible. Worry is visible. Think about that a minute. Worry is visible. It's the things that we see. 
that are causing us to what if. But the wisdom is the invisible. It's the, it's the supernatural part of God. We can't see God. We see the effects of God. And so with that, know that worry is going to take you down a path that you don't want to be in. We need to take what we do know. So if you see something visible that causes you worry, you take the parts that you do know. What do you know about it? What do you absolutely know? Not what did somebody tell you or not what did you read on social media? What do you know? And then from there, you can take it to God. Make sure that you're making those wise choices. It's very important that we we don't just um, jump on that worry wagon. You don't want to trip on the worry wagon. It takes you down a slippery slope, and you don't want that. We need to ask God for wisdom. Oh, I kind of misled. I said 10 scriptures. I have 11. Sorry. 11 scripture tonight, and it is from my favorite book of the Bible, James. James 1.5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Ask for the wisdom. Ask for the understanding. Ask for the knowledge. Ask for all of it. He's not going to get upset with you. God's not going to be like, oh, there you go again, asking for stuff. He's not going to rebuke you for that. You want wisdom for the right reason. Because remember, you have to be asking for the right reason. Otherwise, it doesn't work out anyways. Because you need to be asking with the right motives, the right heart. God speaks of wisdom because wisdom always wins. Wisdom wins. And I was going to say worry woozes, but that just... And I did. I said it anyways. Oh, <laughs> how funny. Okay. Wisdom wins. Got to make sure that wisdom wins all the time. It's, it's, it's so comforting. It's so reassuring. So remember, once again, I'm going to tell you, knowledge is about the education of what you know. And you can be book smart. Um, like I was always told when I was younger, people with book smarts, aren't very um, street smart. I had a lot of book smarts. Not a lot of street smarts. <laughs> some people don't call it street smarts. <laughs> but we won't. Some people call it common sense. Uh, either way, oh, yeah. that part was not filling me up too well. A lot of, lot of, lot of intelligence. A lot of education there. Um, but wisdom is the quality of, of having that experience and, and how we use it and the good judgment. So make sure that we are wise in our decisions and that we are using the, the knowledge that God has given us. And make sure that your foundation is always based on God and his word. And there is peace and there's joy as we rest assured that we are making the right choices. And I know I already talked about what Pastor says one time tonight. Oh, twice maybe. But Pastor always says that we need to put some hustle behind our spiritual muscle. Well, I'd like to add to that a little bit tonight. Because the knowledge that we have is that spiritual muscle. Because we all have muscle. Otherwise, you'd just be a blob. Just bleh. You have muscle. It holds you up. Bone structure. All of that thing. Don't get me started because the kids will come in here and they'll be telling us. Okay. So, we all have muscle. We all have that spiritual, spiritual muscle. And that's the knowledge. But the wisdom is the hustle. The wisdom is the get going. The wisdom is the do. So let's put some of that knowledge in our spiritual muscles and get some wise hustle going. And we need to get people saved. We need to get out there and tell them about Jesus and not get out there, get out there because you have to be socially distanced right now. But tell someone about Jesus. 
that's going to mean you can't just tell your social media friends because they already hear you say it, hopefully. You're going to have to make a phone call. You're going to have to make a connection on somebody you know that's maybe not quite living right or maybe hasn't made that choice yet. We need to call them up and we need to get going. We need to get this moving now because before we know it, we're going to be back to the new normal, whatever that may be, and we don't want to wait till then. Because if we wait until then, people are already going to be back into their new normal. And they're going to be starting a new normal. We need to get them set now so that when they start their new normal, that Jesus, church, God, Bible reading, praying, and fellowshipping with other believers is part of their new normal. we got to get that going now. If you need help on figuring out how to reach somebody we have so many resources. If you're not sure, I'll figure out something for you. I'll pray. I will I will ask God for wisdom and discernment and knowledge in how to reach that somebody that you're trying to reach. But we got to do it together. And together we're stronger, together we're in this and together we're going to make it through. Wisdom and knowledge. They go together, kind of like peanut butter and jelly. Or, kind of like my pink sparkle frosting, sparkles and pink go together all the time. So, have a great night. It was great, so great. Was there any questions? Oops, I forgot. No. No questions? Any good comments? Oh, <laughs> I know I just put her on the spot. I don't know if you guys have been asking questions or making comments. I saw one thing that said, I love that story. That was the only thing I saw <laughs> that scrolled through as I as I lots of amens and just comments when you've been teaching. Oh and, and uh, lots of amens. I appreciate that. And um if there's anything that you have need of, if there's anything that you would like to talk about, make sure that you contact us. Um, we're in the office um, every day. So you can call the office. You can um, post things on our church website. If it's um, like a prayer need, um, put it on tobchurch.org. We have a prayer request section there. You can put it on there. Um, we have this. I mean, I wouldn't put your personal information out there or anything like that. Anything going on. But um, if you'd like somebody just to talk to, we have lots of people that are willing to make phone calls and just chat with people. So there's a lot of different ways. We're not alone. We got this. And I hope tonight was a blessing. I hope that um, you feel a little encouraged and a little wiser. And um, Linda's laughing at me. So um, I am going to pray us out. And uh, then we look forward to seeing you again. Since this is Thursday, there will be a devotional tomorrow on Facebook from our worship leader, Tara. And then um, on Sunday morning, uh, Pastor will be bringing the word on the YouTube channel. And that will be at 930 on Sunday morning. And then we start the week off again with prayer at 9.30 on Facebook Live on Tuesday. And then Wednesday night with Pastors A and J at 6.30 on Facebook Live. So lots, lots going on. Um, stay busy. Stay encouraged. Lord, I thank you for tonight. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to just be able to talk about your word, to speak your word. And Lord, just to make sure that that we're all being wise in our decisions and that we are filling our lives, our hearts, our minds with knowledge, with the knowledge of you, with the knowledge of your word, with the knowledge of your love for us. And Lord, I pray that we would all make wise decisions, that we would use that knowledge for your glory and that we would do what it takes to be an example, a shining example for you. Lord, I pray that you be with each one. 
get rid of that worry and doubt. Help everyone through this. Keep us all safe, Lord. Keep us protected. Help us to make wise choices. Until we meet again, in, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, I'm so excited. I just, I can't, I cannot believe it. It's just another, another week down. Um, one of my favorite scriptures, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Oh my goodness, I've done 12 scriptures tonight. Ah, that's scripture overload. Just kidding. Um, but the greatest of these is, it, uh, we have faith, hope, and love. Sorry, <laughs> started to quote it wrong. Um, so let's put hope in place of the worry, faith in place of the fear, and love in place of ourselves. Have a great night, and we'll see you again soon. I love you all. Bye.